Good evening and welcome to the programme with me, Riz Latif. For the first time in the history of the NHS, an accident and emergency department could close over fears about patient safety. The General Medical Council says it'll ban all junior doctors from working at North Middlesex Hospital's emergency department unless standards improve and they get more support. Without any junior doctors, the A&D unit in Edmonton would effectively have to close. Let's get more from Dan Friedman, who's there for us this evening. Dan. Thank you. Well, I've been speaking to people from the community all day, and what you really get from them is a sense of fear of the unknown. Remember, it was only in 2013 that another nearby A&E was forced to close, Barlett Chase Farm. Now they face the prospect of another one closing, so we've been looking at the implications. 350,000 people rely on it. The A&E sees up to 600 patients per day. But unless things improve quickly, it'll have to close. Where will we go? Because we can't deal with that A&E. You know, I have elderly parents as well. I've got children of my own. I mean, it's a very handy hospital. I just feel that they're understaffed and that there's much too many patients for them to deal with, deal with it all. I mean, I've been waiting in there about four hours. And the regulator agrees. They issued a warning last week. Today, the stakes increased. The General Medical Council stating they are extremely concerned about the standards of training and support for trainee doctors in the emergency department of this hospital. Without adequate support and supervision, there is a serious risk that their patients are being put at risk. We will monitor the situation. Ultimately, we will not allow postgraduate training to continue in this department if the appropriate action is not taken. Which means unless things improve and soon, all junior doctors will be withdrawn. No junior doctors means no A&E. Now, no one from the hospital would come on camera and give us an interview. However, they accept they have an issue with staffing. They say they're trying to recruit more senior doctors. And they also wanted to clarify that at no point are junior doctors put in charge of accident and emergency. They also believe they'll be able to meet the GMC's training criteria by the end of the month. Tonight, local MPs are meeting to discuss next steps following this intervention at today's Prime Minister's Mr. questions. Speaker. The North Middlesex Hospital Accident and Emergency Unit is in complete meltdown. Will the Prime Minister commit to taking swift action to tackle this crisis? In 2013, nearby Chase Farm Accident and Emergency was forced to close. Campaigners warned then it would heap extra pressure on North Middlesex. At one time, we had three A&Es in this, in this area, Barnet, Chase Farm and North Mid, and across those three sites, there were enough A&E consultants. So really, it's bad planning and bad management that's put them into this predicament. And while it's too late for I told you so's, it's hoped it won't be too late for this A&E. Dan Friedman, BBC London News, Edmonton. Well, our political correspondent, Carl Mercer, joins me now. Uh, you've followed developments in London's health system for years. How surprised are you by what we're seeing uh, at the A&D at North Middlesex? Well, as you said, followed it for years and stood outside Chase Farm when campaigners like uh, Kieran, who you saw there in the film, were standing there and saying, this is what will happen if you close our A&E. They will say they've been proved right. But let's put it in a bit of context London-wide. Uh, the A&E at the North Middlesex isn't the only one that isn't hitting the four-hour A&E targets. Only about three across the whole of the capital are hitting those targets. All of them are struggling financially, and all of them are struggling to recruit enough staff, not just doctors, but also A&E specialist nurses. So North Middlesex may be the key problem at the moment, but it's not the only A&E across the capital struggling. And so we're likely to see uh, more changes to the overall health picture in London. Yeah, and we're not just talking A&Es here. Um, the five health sectors across London, London is split up into five different areas at the moment. They're all working on these five-year plans, looking at what will happen in their areas over the next five years. Those plans are due in at the end of June. They go to health bosses, will be scrutinised very closely, not just by health bosses, but by campaigners as well, because they are likely to lead to more A&Es being recommended for closure across the capital, not just A&Es, but also the movement of other services from hospitals. So there will be a lot for local campaigners to chew over. OK, Carl, for now, thank you. Our political correspondent, Carl Messer.